Hello and welcome back. Today I'm at the Sand Creek Massacre site in southeastern Colorado near Eads. Probably one of the worst events that's ever happened in American history. So I'm going to tell you about what happened here and we're going to take a look around the site. All right, we have about this half a mile walk up to Monument Hill. So I'm going to tell you what happened here and then we'll go check out the memorial up there. So at dawn on November 29th, 1864, approximately 675 U.S. volunteer soldiers commanded by Colonel John M. Shivington attacked a village of about 750 Cheyenne and Arapaho Indians along Sand Creek in southeastern Colorado. Using small arms and howitzer fire, the troops drove the people out of their camp. While many managed to escape the initial onslaught, others, mostly women, children, and the elderly, fled into and up the bottom of the dry stream bed. The soldiers followed, shooting at them as they struggled through the sand. At a point several hundred yards above the village, the women and children frantically evacuated pits and trenches along the side of the stream bed to protect themselves. Some adult men attempted to hold back the army with whatever weapons they had managed to retrieve from the camp. And at several places along Sand Creek, the soldiers shot people from opposite banks. Over the course of eight hours, the troops killed around 150 Cheyenne and Arapaho people, composed mostly of women, children, and the elderly. Before departing, the troops burned the village and mutilated and scalped the dead, carrying off body parts as trophies. During the Civil War, the 1862 battle later hailed as the Gettysburg of the West, ended the rebel threat and made Shivington a colonel. But as Colorado troops deployed east to more active campaigns, conflict increased with Indians. Tensions peaked in the summer of 1864 following the murder of a white family near Denver. A crime attributed it at the time to raiding Cheyenne or Arapaho. The territorial governor, John Evans, called on citizens to quote, kill and destroy hostile natives and raised a new regiment led by Shevington. Evans also ordered friendly Indians to seek out places of safety, such as U.S. forts. In July, 1864, Colorado Governor John Evans sent a circular to the Plains Indians inviting those who were friendly to go to a place of safety at Fort Lyon on the Eastern Plains where their people would be given provisions and protected by the United States troops. The circular itself was dated June 7, 27, 1864. It wasn't until three months later, September 28th, that the Cheyenne came to Denver to have peace talks with Governor Evans. At this conference, the chiefs were told by Governor Evans that peace was not possible at that point and that whatever peace they make must be with the soldiers and not with me. At this council, White El Antelope said that he feared the soldiers might kill some of his people while he was there. Governor Evans told him that there was a great danger of it. And then he told White Antelope that one of the military chiefs, Colonel Shevington, was present and could tell the tribes what was necessary to secure peace. Governor Evans made clear that the purpose of the circular was not to extend peace, 
but rather it was an attempt to bring in the Indians who were friendly. Black Kettle, leading chief of around 163, mostly Southern Cheyenne, had led his band, joined by some Arapahoes under Chief Nywe, to Fort Lyon in compliance with provisions of a peace parley that was held in Denver in September of 1864. After a while, the American Indians were asked to relocate to Big Sandy Creek here, less than 40 miles northwest of Fort Lyon, under the threat of their safety. Black Kettle flew a U.S. flag and a white flag tied beneath it over his lodge as the Fort Lyon commander had advised him. This was to show he was friendly and forestall any attack by the Colorado soldiers. Meanwhile, Shivington and 425 men of the 3rd Colorado Cavalry rode to Fort Lyon, arriving on November 28, 1864. Once at the fort, Shivington took command of 250 men of the 1st Colorado Cavalry and maybe as many as 12 men of the 1st Regiment New Mexico Volunteer Infantry, then set out for Black Kettle's encampment here at Big Sandy Creek. Prior to the massacre, Several officers were not eager to join in the attack. Captain Silas Soule, Lieutenant Joseph Kramer, and Lieutenant James Connor protested that attacking the peaceful camp would violate the pledge of safety provided to the Indians and would dishonor the uniform of the army. The following morning, Shivington gave the order to attack. Two officers, Captain Silas Soul and Lieutenant Joseph Kramer, commanding Company D and Company K of the 1st Colorado Cavalry, refused to obey and told their men to hold fire. However, the rest of Shivington's men immediately attacked the village. Ignoring the U.S. flag and a white flag that was run up shortly after the attack began. They murdered as many of the Indians as they could. Initially, the Sand Creek engagement was reported as a victory against a brave and numerous enemy and was very praised. Within weeks, however, Witnesses and survivors began telling stories of a possible massacre. Several investigations were conducted, two by the military and one by the Joint Committee on the Conduct of the War. Captain Silas Soul testified against Shivington, stating, hundreds of women and children were coming towards us and getting on their knees for mercy only to be shot and have their brains beat out by the men professing to be civilized. Indians didn't fight from trenches as Shivington claimed. They fled up the creek and desperately dug into its sandbanks for protection. From there some young men defended themselves as well as they could with a few rifles and bows until overwhelmed by guns and howitzers. Others were chased down and killed as they fled across the plains. Seoul estimated the Indian dead at 200, all but 60 of them women and children. He also told of how the soldiers not only scalped the dead, but cut off the ears and privates of chiefs. 
of Shivington's leadership, Sewell reported, there was no organization among our troops. They were a perfect mob. Every man on his own hook. Given this chaos, some of the dozen or so soldiers killed at Sand Creek were likely hit by friendly fire. Shivington escaped court martial because he had already resigned from the military, but his once promising career was over. He became a nomad and failed entrepreneur rather than a congressman. Sol, his principal accuser, also paid for his role in the affair. Soon after testifying, he was shot dead on a Denver street by assailants believed to have been associates of Shivington. And no one was ever convicted or punished for the crime. Black Kettle, the Cheyenne chief who had raised a U.S. flag in a futile gesture of fellowship, survived the massacre, carrying his badly wounded wife from the field and straggling east across the wintry plains. The next year, in his continuing effort to make peace, he signed a treaty and resettled his band on reservation land in Oklahoma. He was killed there in 1868 in yet another massacre, this one led by Jorms Armstrong Custer. The Sand Creek Massacre remains one of the worst atrocities ever perpetrated on Native Americans and one of the most controversial events in American history. I think we're coming up to a few plaques up here. Yeah, so their camps were on the other side of the creek from here on the other side of those trees. So, um, and all of that is considered sacred land and no one can go over there except for the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes today to perform ceremonies so all this land is sacred it's practically like a crime scene and you know almost a cemetery as well so I heard a lot of the scalps and body parts that were collected. A few of them got to some museums over the years and they were actually returned here to the site and buried. So this is pretty much a cemetery here where there's still some remains as well of those fallen. So they have a nice bench here for silence and respect. So we're going to sit here in silence for a minute. I've heard online a lot of people say they'll sit here and maybe hear voices or screams. So let's sit here in silence for a minute and see what we can hear.
All right, we made it up to Monument Hill Overlook here. Uh, so you guys, I have to say, it was quite emotional walking that trail up here right next to the Sand Creek Massacre site. So just a lot of emotions just being here. Uh, but once you get to on top of the hill here, they do have a nice monument. The Sand Creek Battleground, November 29th and 30th, 1864. And then you can just see on top of the hill here, more of an overlook of uh, the area. You can see all the trees that lined the creek. And so I think the park ranger was saying all the the tribe camps are on the other side of the creek over there. Is where their villages were. It's just really surreal just being in the same area when you know everything that happened. Hope you guys enjoyed that video and getting to see the Sand Creek Massacre site. I am going to do videos on the graves of Captain Silas Soul as well as Colonel Sheventon. So as soon as I finish those, I will put them in the description below if you're interested in learning more about those guys. So please like and subscribe for some more videos and I'll see you at the next grave. Thanks.